page 44 brings us to chorales. A chorale on the marimba is when notes or chords are connected smoothly and evenly by rolling. Now, as you look ahead into the etudes of Azalea and Wellington, you'll notice that both of them start with a single line melody. Then, after a number of bars, a second note is added, so two mallets playing at the same time, and then three, and then four. So your challenge is to have that single line melody be very smooth and very fluid, and then gradually add in the added voices in the same manner. Now to make this easy, or easier, utilize a soft mallet. Soft mallets help to hide some of the articulation and to make the rolling sound very smooth. Also, as you notice the music, Look at the phrase markings. The phrase markings tell the player where to breathe. So important to breathe. You and I both know that we do not have to breathe at those moments, unlike a horn player or a trumpet player. However, watch the violinist, who doesn't have to breathe either. As that bow lifts off the string, they will breathe and then start the next passage and phrase. You should do the same thing. It will help your music to be expressive and lyrical. Now. Regarding roll speed, your charge is to keep a constant roll speed. Marimbists are often criticized by performing accelerations and deaccelerations when they're playing rolls. That might sound a little bit like this. In a corral setting, it might sound like this. Now this may feel fine to you as the player, but to the audience, they hear these series of swells and it sounds more like a rhythm and it does not sound expressive. Think about how a cellist would play a single line note with a bow always on the string. Keep a steady roll speed to emulate that sound. So in this case, same roll speed throughout. change dynamics, but keep the roll speed consistent. Now, a little word about rolls. There's four different types of rolls primarily. The first one is the one I'm using right now, the traditional roll. That's basically right, left, right, left, back and forth. Very simple. The second one is the double lateral roll from the double lateral strokes. The permutation that's most often used is one, two, Four, three. A third type of roll is called the musser roll, or the ripple roll, or sometimes the flop roll. It's called a flop because the inside stick actually flops after the outside stick has performed. I'm holding the inside stick very loose and relaxed. Doesn't sound like much like a roll, but if you put it with the third mallet, you'll actually hear a triplet type pattern emerge. With four mallets, that same pattern, rhythmic pattern also is consistent and it sounds like this. Notice that my hands aren't turning, but my wrists are lifting to be able to create that flop sound. It's a very effective roll type, especially in very soft dynamics. And the final roll type is called the single-handed roll or one-handed roll, where one hand alternates back and forth, creating a continuous tone. Now the other hand does not have to stay at the same speed. slower or faster, depending on the performer. For me, 90 to 95 percent of the time with rolls, I'm playing traditional rolls. I feel that it gives the instrument depth and strength and projection. I use the other rolls in terms of color or texture, if you will, and that will change based upon each phrase. 
Very rarely do I change role types inside of the phrase. So as you play this music, this chorale is coming up soon. Take a look at that. Utilize the traditional role and experiment with these others. But primarily, I think you should be performing with the traditional role. I hope you enjoy these chorales. <laughs>